Okay, my next step is I'm gonna, <clears throat> what I'd like to do, since I've got some extra parts here, not extra parts, but uh, these parts here that uh, aren't gonna be able to be completed until I get the uh, assembly that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I don't wanna lose anything, so I've reassembled the blade grips onto the feathering bar with all the washers and stuff in the proper order. And uh, what I'd like to do is work on getting these gear out and into the new frame so that way I can put the head assembly and stuff into that. So um, anyhow, these gear come out, they'll, they'll just slide out. And it's real easy on a frame that's broke like mine. You just kind of slide them right out once, uh, once you get the shaft off, that is. Uh, and the gear that I'll be replacing is the main drive gear. This one looks like it could possibly can, you know, still use it. Well, no, I take that back. We got some broken teeth there. Um, so I am going to replace that. And to do that, you just undo those screws there that will come apart. Uh, and then you just put the, the new one back on it. Uh, and it feels like the locking, uh, the locking gear in there, or the locking uh, assembly, uh, is still in good shape. So uh, we'll go ahead and swap that gear out real quick. Okay, here I have uh, the gear assembly apart. Um, I don't know if we're supposed to grease that or not, but I think I'm going to add just a little dab of that uh, grease that I showed earlier, that tube. Yeah, this tube of this grease uh, to the inside of that just a little bit uh, since I've got it open here and uh, I wouldn't use too much of it and I uh, just wanted to add that in there uh, and, and then we'll reassemble okay I guess it'll uh, what I've got here is the new frame doesn't come with any fasteners, but that's okay. We'll be using the old fasteners uh, from the old frame anyhow. Uh, and we're going to need the bearings that are located in the new frame, or the old frame, I'm sorry. So what I'm going to do for the next step is uh, we'll cut the zip ties for the receiver and the uh, ESC, and uh, we'll get those out of there. And then that should all stay as one harness, and which I'd like to keep as one harness for the time being. Uh, so that way I make sure that it all goes back together when I'm ready to put it on the new frame correctly. Uh, and uh, I have replaced this motor already before. Uh, just as a side note, if we take these two screws off on this side, two screws off on the other side, that's what's holding this motor mount in place. <coughs> So when I go to take this uh, frame assembly apart, that'll come off real easy. Uh, we will probably also uh, just take out that receiver or that servo. Uh, probably pop those two arms off. Uh, and then we have another servo that's up inside there that will uh, most likely come apart real easy once I take the frame in half. So I will start to disassemble. If I come across anything of importance, I will uh, point that out. Okay, one thing I did see of note. There is some sort of support bar that goes in here. There's um, four screws. Oh, I oh, hate it when you lose screws on the floor, huh? Uh, there is a su that support bar there. Uh, it's got the four screws that uh, go in on, on two on either, either side. Um, so you may want to save that piece because the new one, the new um, new frame, doesn't come with that piece in there. So uh, anyway, on to the next piece. I think I mentioned earlier that there's a servo up inside here, but it's not. I forgot that it, that's the linkage that's connected to the servo that we have over here. So I uh, just wanted to point that out. I'm sure some of you are laughing at me going, ah, he ain't no servo in there. This guy don't know what he's doing. So uh, 
and uh, but again this is I'm I'm new to this this is the first time I've ever had to take one of these things apart uh, but it's all part of the hobby and uh, I mean I looked on the web to, for other how-to videos on the blade 450 and there's really not too many that I could find so I'm hoping that this will help somebody out in the future so uh, okay just wanted to put that in there okay and I'm doing this little bit here just uh, for my benefit in the event that I get channels mixed up uh, this servo here that I've taken out that goes to the elevator channel on the receiver and I'm going to go ahead and pop that off now. And uh, again, I'm pretty much doing this for my benefit. So if I forget which channel that that servo goes into, I can look back in this video and go, oh, that goes in the elevator. All right. Okay, just an update as to what I've done so far. I have been able to get the old frame apart. Uh, one thing I noticed is that they've got uh, sticky tape. Uh, double-sided sticky tape on both uh, the ESC and the receiver. I'm going to try to use what I can of that. I don't have any spare with me. Uh, and I think there should be enough sticky on there to where it'll still work, plus being zip-tied down. Uh, the bearings, I got the, the two bearings, yeah, and as, as I th expected, they, they came off real easy once uh, I got the pieces apart. Uh, the control arm here for the elevator servo uh, bearings are on that as well. Uh, it's going to be uh, a little, well, it won't be too tricky uh, to get that arm set properly again. That'll all come down to um, adjusting the servos and getting the swash plate level and so forth once we get to that point. Um, so now I'm going to uh, start transferring... Uh, uh, stuff over to the, the new frame. Uh, just got to pay attention to the bearings. Uh, there are various little screws. and red they were all connected to, on the same color uh, in being an e-flight uh, ESC and, and helicopter motor that's probably going to be the case but uh, again when you go to do the test run after doing the repair you definitely want to make sure that the motor is going the right direction uh, this damage that you see on the motor here that was caused right after I installed the motor and uh, put the battery in and the battery was too close to the motor and um, it rubbed up next to the battery. Uh, it did destroy the battery, wore right through the plastic right into the core of the battery, but um, there was no other damage done to the helicopter and as you, that's what our motor mount looks like there. Uh, and then when you put the screws back in on the motor mount after and, and mounting it, it uh, may not be a bad idea to uh, use a little bit of blue Loctite uh, I've been told that the blue Loctite is the preferred. Uh, I had one guy, a gentleman, at the hobby store. He said that he won't even touch a, a helicopter or airplane for repair if it's got red Loctite on it because it uh, cinches in really good and hard and difficult to get the screws out. So uh, you want to use the blue Loctite. Uh, and, and that's only on metal to metal parts. You don't want to use... Uh, any blue Loctite or, or Loctite from uh, on metal to plastic, it will uh, d uh, destroy the plastic. Alrighty, that should uh, be it for the moment, and I will continue to update as I progress. Okay, I just wanted to remind you that uh, don't forget that um, bracket that we took out of the other older frame uh, before putting everything back together. I started to fit the frame back, the new frame together, and remembered that. So I thought it uh, might be a good idea to um, remind you. Uh, and uh, there, oh, the other thing too. I they got the two bearings here for the main shaft, and it looks like there's supposed to be another bearing here. And I looked and looked, and I didn't see another bearing. Um, and it doesn't make any sense that they would have a bearing there because you're 
main shaft is going to go, or the, the main shaft, but the drive gear is going to go there. And uh, in the past, when I took out the drive drive gear, it, it just it just pulls out after you remove the the main rotor shaft. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and assemble it with just those two bearings, and I am going to keep an eye out for a third. And hopefully I don't get everything together and realize that I've got spare parts. So, and uh, just wanted to state that. And off to the next step. Another thing to note that uh, before you screw down all of the screws to the main frame halves, uh, it's also a good idea to put your motor in first. Because that, there is a little slot there on the, the body or the frame for the motor mount. Uh, so once you get everything tightened up, it, it'll be difficult to get that in there. So before you tighten everything up, and uh, mount your uh, motor.